Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the principal and CFO of Kai Hawaii, and he's the founder and owner of Island Business Management, and he's the chair of our Hawaii Restaurant Association. He does a lot. He is Ryan Tanaka, and today we are going beyond finance. Hey, Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, Rusty, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Ryan, I remember when you played JV tennis at Punahou, and I know that you're also a wrestler and you ran cross country. Um, how was your experiences at Punahou? I had a great experience at Punahou. I was there for middle school and high school, and it really prepared me you know, for life. And from there, I went to Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, and worked in Tokyo, but you know, all of those experiences later on really stem from a wonderful education at Punahou School and you know, great coaches like yourself. Um, I wasn't quite at varsity level, but I did have Coach Scott you know, for, for JV, for tennis, and I, I did have an aside. I was a wrestler primarily and was under Matt, uh, Coach Matt Oney, who was just phenomenal. Now, Ryan, I, I also know that you won the Most Inspirational Player Award at Punahou for three times. I mean, that's impressive. That really says a lot about your character. And, uh, you know, in terms of that, the, the team was the one that was voting for it, right? I'm surprised that you remember that. Thank you very much, Coach Rusty. Uh, yes, I did, uh, my freshman, sophomore, and senior year. Um, and and it, it is, it's a vote from the team. And, uh, you know, there's so many inspirational uh, wrestlers and, and athletes at Punahou School. So to be to be recognized, it was truly an honor. Now, Ryan, I know your wife, Casey, because I trained her in tennis for many years. And she's such a terrific person. I'm so happy that you both connected and you guys are married. And I know that you guys also went swimming with the sharks together. How was that experience? That was a great experience. We did. Um, Casey, she, you know, every birthday, she tries something every now and then that's out of the box, out of her comfort zone. And so one year she wanted to go swimming with the sharks without a cage, went to Haleiwa and um, I'm prone to motion sickness, but I, I took, you know, I had the ginger and I had my Dramamine. So I took that before and it didn't help at all, but we still had a great experience out there. And yeah, there, you know, the, the sharks are nocturnal and they typically will feed them in advance. And so, uh, when you when you go there during the day, it, it's a great experience. It's very peaceful. The, the sharks are there. They're peaceful as well. They're, you know, we had, saw Galapagos sharks and black tip. I mean, there were probably 10 or 12 sharks with us um, in the ocean. And they must have uh, been between as, as small as like six feet to as, you know, maybe 10, 11 feet long also. Well, Ryan, I, I, I know my friends have done that, that swimming with the sharks. I mean, this is like you said, it's, it's free swimming with the sharks. You're not in a cage. And, and they said it's such a surreal experience. And, and I like hearing that, that you and Casey did that. And I want to ask you, Ryan, about you being the principal and CFO of Kai Hawaii. Tell me, tell me what you guys do at Kai Hawaii. Kai Hawaii is a locally owned structural engineering company. And you know, most of our work is public infrastructure over half. And that includes um, highways, bridges, airports, schools, medical institutions. And then the other half of our work is private. So we, you know, we service um, our clients, their landowners, developers, architects, and other clients with anything from shopping centers to multifamily and just about everything in between. At Kai Hawaii, you know, I, I was fortunate to um, to join under the founder and president Ken Hayashida, who I'd worked uh, now about eight years, but I'd known him for about four or five years prior to joining. And I always called him as my trusted structural engineer. And you know, he has built a company with now fifty, close to fifty employees, uh, mostly 
licensed structural engineers and project managers. And they're just some of the kindest and smartest people I've worked with. You know, every regularly we talk about our, you know, one of our, our purpose of our company, which is to create, uh, to help create a safe and sustainable tomorrow for our community. And that's something that we all believe in. And, you know, I, I see our structural engineers regularly researching and trying to find um, the most suitable structural solution that's economical, that's modern, and that'll really give their project the, the longest shelf life possible. And, and that's what you want from a trusted structural engineer. So it's a great honor to be here and, and yes, recently promoted to principal. Well, it's amazing. I mean, at Kai Hawaii, you guys do a ton of stuff and you mentioned Ken earlier. What do you admire most about Ken? He's trustworthy. You know, he's just someone who's selfless and he, you know, he does demonstrate great leadership because he's constantly looking to build the next generation. And so, so much of our time is just spent on, on how do we, how do we grow as a company? How do we grow as individuals, right? It's not just about, you know, uh, achieving customer service excellence, which, which is a top priority for us, but also personal excellence. Yeah, oh, I like that. Yeah, he's a great leader. And, and Ryan, you, you were the founder and owner of Island Business Management. Tell me what you do with Island Business Management. So I founded Island Business Management in 2007, and it is a, uh, I specialize in corporate finance. So this is where, you know, I, I help clients to diversify their balance sheet to acquire, manage, and sell real estate, different businesses, strategic investments to really help uh, grow their own portfolio and to create this uh, safe and sustainable future for their own employees. So that's, that's what Island Business Management specializes in. And Ryan, I, when I look at you, I know that you are the master of finance. I mean, you really are. And you do a lot of things behind the scenes, but I want to know how did you first get started in business? What what got you excited about wanting to get into business? Well, I, th well, first of all, thank you, Coach Rusty. That's a that's a that means a lot coming from you because you were always the varsity tennis coach for Punahou, and everybody knew that you you bred champions. So that really means a lot coming from you. You know what started me in business at a young age was was because our our family. To get what we wanted, we had to earn it ourselves. And the fastest way to do that was to sell a product, right? Or to provide a service and you would receive um, cash, you know, or, or some type of payment. And so that just became the lowest hanging fruit, right? The path of least resistance to getting what I wanted when I was in middle school and high school. And, and then um, my junior year of high school, I was at Punahou. And that was the year that actually I, I played JV tennis. That summer, I was invited by Nestle, the, you know, the, um, the chocolate milk company to fly to the Philippines where they have a very large presence and they wanted to promote one of their larger uh, products, Milo, through pogs, through, you know, through milk caps. So this was a variation of milk caps and they, they flew me out with a friend and a couple of chaperones and we were their representatives, like the US POG champions is how we were called. And we traveled um, you know, all across Manila, Makati. We were on national television. We performed and demonstrated at private schools, public schools, mega malls. You know, it was a very uh, humbling experience, but we were at a parking lot one night because every night they would, take, they would take us to a different restaurant to try. And when we got out of the van, I had a driver and three tour guides assigned to us. The, uh, there was a girl who came up to me out of the blue and she probably was somewhere between four and five years old and she had a, a cup, you know, like a mug and she held it up to me and looked into my eyes and that was my first time experiencing someone, you know, asking for money, basically begging and it wasn't an adult like you see here in Hawaii. This was a child you know? um, and so I looked into her eyes and I tried to understand her in that moment and I couldn't I couldn't see a soul I couldn't see life you know she was just empty and it really left an impression on me that there are people out there who need help you know Nestle had given us seven hundred dollars of spending money in 1996 that was a lot of money and so I took out a hundred dollar bill put it in her cup and the driver you know pulled it out of, my, out of the cup put it in my pocket pulled me aside and said look at that staircase 
And there were a few men who were sitting down and he said, that money will go to them. It's not going to go to her. And I realized no matter what I wanted to do at that, at that, in that moment, I couldn't help her because it would go to them. And so what I love about business is that it allows you to really live beyond the lines, right? Beyond the game, like the two books say, and to, um, to influence industries, however you believe you can and, and to create, you know, positive, meaningful change. And that's what drew me to business is that, you know, it allowed me to do that. And, you know, they say that your childhood can really shape some of the experiences can shape who you become today. And that was definitely one of the experiences that, you know, that is in the back of my mind when I think about our employees and you know, how we can help them, how we can service our clients, how we can make a positive impact in people in our community. Well, you're definitely making a positive impact in our community, Ryan. I, I know that you were doing a lot behind the scenes during COVID. And you, I know that you also did a bunch of surveys to try to really help with COVID relief. Can you tell me more about what you did there behind the scenes? You know, the, the COVID the economic hardship surveys really came about because the state of Hawaii was receiving $1.25 billion in federal CARES money, but this is the first um, federal response. And so a handful of, of state uh, House Finance Committee members had called a meeting with members of the private sector. I was privileged to be invited into that phone call. And you know, their question was, how do we spend this money? So one of the proposals I had thrown out was commercial rent relief because you know, this is now in the beginning of April when businesses deemed non-essential were being temporarily closed. And so people were struggling with their lease agreements, with paying rent. That was, you know, the single large problem because it was even a relief for those who were unemployed or with the federal plus up. And so um, that led to, uh, you know, my reaching out to city council members and then to different trade associations who were all very supportive. You know, trade associations became the clarion call for many hardest hit businesses during COVID. And, and then um, I found myself, because of the people who I was with, on a call with our chief state economist, Dr. Eugene Tian, who is employed at the State of Hawaii Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism. It was him, his deputy director, and they, they offered, because we had just created a survey before we um, published it, they offered to administer it. So that was a blessing in disguise. From that point, you know, reached out to the banks, the credit unions, they all agreed. And within, you know, a matter of, of days, maybe weeks, we were able to, to create a statewide push to really diagnose, you know, who is, who is suffering from their inability to pay rent commercially. And, you know, our results showed that it was over half of businesses statewide were, were suffering. You know, we, we did, like you said, do a quarterly survey. So four times uh, during COVID, we, we may do a follow-up survey. But this was an opportunity, uh, Coach Rusty, to really see the, you know, the community at its best, right? Everyone coming together and, and trying to find a solution in a time of need. Well, I, I was so proud of you, Ryan, to really be instrumental in doing what you did to help countless businesses here in our community. And Ryan, I want to ask you regarding business, what's one of the biggest adversities you faced? Well, for me, it was, I'll just, what comes to mind is, is COVID, right? Um, because we had just, I put together a hui and we had acquired a Waikiki restaurant on January 30, 2020, 45 days later, we're hit by COVID. And, um, you know, the adversity was because when you're unable to pay rent in, in a market where you're already paying a premium and you have a prominent landlord who uh, was public, who's publicly traded and, and you know, they have quarterly earnings announcements and they need to tell their shareholders that they're being responsible, but they're being fiduciaries of their money you know, you, you, you understand that at some point, both sides have to give something, right? We have to pay something, we have to do something. So we never stopped paying rent through all of COVID. And we ended up working with our landlords at the time, um, Barbara Campbell from Outrigger and Chris Sullivan from American Assets Trust, just phenomenal uh, people and great to work with. And, you know, so happy that they were able to fill all of the properties uh, during and, and, you know, through some of the aftermath of, COVID, of the initial COVID. Um, uh, pandemic that, that affected all of us. But that was probably one of the greatest adversities was just 
you know, closing on that transaction 45 days before COVID really hit. And, you know, it was a, it was a, um, there was some panic, right? Because for finance people, like you said, I'm a finance person. And so everything is numbers, right? And so it's all linear. And, and then you have COVID, which created uncertainty, this uncertainty that became this kiss of death that nobody could really, you know, wrap their minds around. And, 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 you know, we thought it was going to be done by Easter, right, of 2020, that then became hopefully Independence Day of 2021. And then we saw the Delta variant take over. So it's, it's been an ongoing um, experience. But fortunately, we had a great landlord and a lot of federal relief. And so everything worked out. And Ryan, I have to say that restaurant that you acquired, that's Giovanni Pastrami in Waikiki. I'm, I love that restaurant and that bar. I mean, it's so nice. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you guys got it. I'm glad, you know, things are going good again. And Ryan, I want to ask you, as chair of the Hawaii Restaurant Association, what are some of your goals? Well, let me start by saying I am the incoming chair. The, uh, the chair is actually Greg Maples, and, um, and I, I just love him as a, as a person, as a professional. I was working closely with him during COVID. So our collective goals, you know, along with Cheryl Matsuoka, the executive director, who I also love and admire, um, you know, they've been true leaders during COVID. And, and HRA, you know, think about restaurants, right? The restaurant industry is a $5.6 billion industry before COVID, 3,600 restaurants, almost 100,000 full and part-time employees. So, you know, they, they are significant here in Hawaii and we're a destination economy. Uh, right now, the biggest goal is helping all of, all of you know, our members and, and restaurants as a whole and hardest hit businesses, because it's not just for our restaurants, but helping hardest hit businesses to, to make it through the Delta variant. And that's through the employee retention credit. Um, you know, because we're in Hawaii, it's very likely that if you're hardest hit, you do qualify. So if your CPA tells you no, you know, we're, we're finding other um, category experts to give second, third opinions, because most likely you can get some additional funding that will float you through the end of the year. And then on top of that is just working closely with Mayor Blangiardi and Governor Ige and, and their administrations. They've been so inclusive in their leadership and so great to work with, uh, just working with them on, on the timing of loosening restrictions, right? Making sure that they're able to manage the public health crisis while we're able to help them to, to rebuild and re-stimulate the economy. Well, I love hearing that, Ryan. I mean, you guys are all working together so well. And Ryan, you have both of my books. And I want to ask you two things. First of all, did you like the books? And secondly, if you liked it, what are some things that stood out to you in it? I, I do have your two books. They're fantastic reads. I recommend everybody to read it. I was able to read them very quickly. They're, um, I have them right here with me. Uh, the first book, Beyond the Lines, uh, my interpretation of it, Coach Rusty, is that they're really, um, there are different um, trade secrets on how to succeed in your profession, right? how to build a leadership culture in what you do professionally. Whereas Beyond the Game is how do you then succeed at life? Right? How do you develop habits and, and attributes that will help you to just to be a successful human being. So the two really work in tandem. You can't read one and not read the other. You know, and I'm hoping that you write a third book. You know, for me, one of the one of the um, most meaningful parts of your second book towards the very end. So I, I don't want to um, give away anything, but it, it's the one percent principle. And it's every day living one percent better, you know, trying to find ways to to be one percent better than you were last week or remember things, you know, read and acquire knowledge, you know, always be and you live, live a life to be 1% better. I used to use a 10% rule and that bar is just too high. You know, it's, it's, um, it's so easy to forget about your goals and go on, you know, to your day to day, but 1% is tangible for all of us. And I think it's a great reminder for, for us to just live 1% better, but you can learn more about what that means by reading your book. And I encourage everybody to, to read it. They're great reads. Yeah, I mean, I like that you mentioned that because little victories lead to big victories. And, you know, you can't just do something and, oh, I got a big victory. No, it's all these little things that lead up to it. So, and yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting how you said 10% and I go 1% and everybody can get better through 1%, right? Yes, I, yeah, I, I would use 10%, but I've scaled that down to 1%. <laughs> yeah. Now, Ryan, I need you to be my promoter, you know, for my books, and then there's a better chance there could be a third book. 
Well, you know, one, one thing that you mentioned in your book is, is, is really, you know, what it means to live beyond the lines. And so I'm hoping that you can add some color there. Certainly, I've already been sharing your book with my kids, with my family, with, you know, with a lot of our employees. And uh, we are hoping, you know, we're looking forward to you coming in and, and actually training all of us at Kai Hawaii in, you know, later on in December. So you, you will continue to have a lasting impact on all of us, co-trustee. Well, I hope I don't let you down, Ryan, but I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that speaking and training uh, in late uh, December. And Ryan, I want, you've, been, you've worked with the Tokyo Star Bank. I mean, you've worked with Deutsche Securities. You've been around a lot of great leaders throughout your life. What are some things that you feel the greatest leaders do? Yeah, you know, Tokyo Star Bank, Deutsche, I, I really was working with some phenomenal uh, world-class people. And to this day, I mean, just world-class, some of the best. Um, and, and moving to Hawaii, I, you know, with my clients uh, through Island Business Management, Ken Hayashida, just working with, again, world-class, some of the best people. And really what, what I find that they do on a consistent basis is help and inspire people to do what they didn't even realize they could do themselves. Right, that's that's leadership, you know. When when you can, you know, kind of like what, what what you've done, twenty two consecutive victories, um, and then the year that you leave, well, I don't want to, um, you know, I, I'm sure that there's great coaching that that can that continues, but it just says a lot, Coach Rusty, that after the year after you left, right, for the last six years, Punahou School has only won once, and, and so I think great leaders really allow you know help people who may already be talented, who may already have the right chemistry and the right makeup to, to do what, you know, to do things beyond what they believed they could accomplish. And it's creating that purpose. And you talk about your four Ps and, and I wholeheartedly believe that, right? It starts with people and then your purpose, right? You need to have a, a defined purpose and then follow the right processes that will lead to good performance. And, you know, as a finance person, I do look at financial performance as well, right? Not just community impact and having a great product and service, but also, you know, is it financially sustainable? Well, that's why you're the master of finance, Ryan. And, you know, I want to ask you, Ryan, out of all these experiences that you've had so far, what's, what's a valuable, very important lesson you've learned? You know, I would say one recent lesson that, that stands out to me is just letting go of the past, right? You know, we're always learning from the past. And that's, that's important, right? You learn from the past, it helps shape the future. But when, you know, when you're personally involved in something that, that may experience you know, an outcome that you weren't hoping for, then it, it's easy to, um, to hang on to that. But I think you know, one important life lesson is just letting go of it because today, tomorrow, there's gonna be new decisions that, that need to be made. And, and that really comes with a clear conscience Right, and looking at a new set of variables and making clear decisions by learning from the past, but also letting go of, of, of any personal ties to it so that you can really um, make, again, uh, same thing like we try to help our lawmakers develop data and make informed decisions. We do the same thing for our businesses. Well, I, I liked hearing that too, Ryan. And what would you say, Ryan? I mean, you wherever you have gone, I mean, you've done so many things. You, you are so successful at everything that you do. When you really reflect back on, on everything so far in your young life, why are you successful? Well, you know, there, there's been uh, struggles along the way. And, and, and that was, um, you know, all part of the process. And what I've, I think what I've learned, again, going back to your four Ps, it starts with people, right? You want to work with the right people. And so now when I look at an investment, whether it's even in real estate, um, do we have the right property management team? If it's a development, is it the right developer? If it's a business, do we have the right operators in place? So starting with, the, with great people, so high quality people, and then are they doing the, the you know, things for the right reasons, right? Are they following their purpose? And do they have the right processes in place? And if so, are they delivering, right? And, and you know, as we're now evaluating different businesses, you know, one thing at Kai Hawaii, for example, Coach Rusty is uh, Ken Hayashida and I co-founded Kai High Capital. So it's an investment arm. We make strategic investments to help build that, you know, that safe and sustainable tomorrow for our own employees and for their retirements. And we look at, you know, are these the right people? Are these the right projects? And are they high quality? And, and that's, you know, I think if you have those ingredients in place and it's a lot easier to have confidence that you're making a good investment. 
I completely agree with you, Ryan. And I want to ask you about affordable housing. I mean, during this pandemic, I mean, it really obviously affected affordable housing. Can you talk about that and what you're doing to help our community in terms of affordable housing as well? So just pre-COVID, I was uh, invited to a meeting and, and finance chair Sylvia Luke had you know, announced the Alice report, right? That says over 17,000 affordable housing units are needed over the next five years here in Hawaii. So that's the demand. You know, we can't build fast enough to do that. And you know, one thing that um, some you know very successful developers like Marshall Hung, Mel Kanashige, Newton Chung, and Derek Locke did was back in 2019, they worked with the Caldwell administration and city council at the time to um, establish Bill 7, which is here in Honolulu. And it allows a landowner who builds, uh, who has a property below 20,000 square feet. And who wants to build affordable housing and you know service that 100% AMI or less um, gap group allows them different concessions so they can build up to 60 feet, they can have higher density, no elevator requirement, single staircase, no parking requirement, and then they waive the city waives a number of permitting fees and wastewater fees. So, just to give you an example, if you have a, a 5,000 square foot land and it's appropriately zoned apartment or business DMX you can build up to 25 affordable housing units. So that's an area that I've really been spending quite a bit of my time in because um, it's also become a priority for Mayor Blangiardi. His first bill, Bill 1, offers an incentive, a completion bonus. So if you build an affordable housing Bill 7 building, he'll give you a percentage back as, as an incentive bonus. And that's become you know, so important for his administration. So I've had the opportunity to work closely with, with Mayor, with his managing director, Mike Formby, with planning director, Dean Uchida. And you know, we now are, you know, we're, we're tracking all of the Bill 7 projects citywide and we're at 17 permanent applications. There's about nine uh, to 10 projects that are being planned and, and in design. And those represent, the, the permanent applications represent over 450 affordable housing units. So going back to the 17,000, we just can't build fast enough to get there. You know, there's other um, 201H, you know, very successful tower affordable housing developers who are building in the hundreds and in the thousands also. So, you know, collectively, if, you know, if we all band together and, and just really continue to, to push um, ourselves and, and to, you know, get these projects done, then maybe we can move the needle and, and really address this, this growing problem of the lack of affordable housing here in Hawaii. Ryan, I, I'm so happy that the mayor and our state representatives are calling you. I mean, <laughs> I, that, that really, that's how smart they are. They know who to call. <laughs> and Ryan, you. you know, as successful and busy as you are, I mean, obviously having balance is super, you know, necessary in life. And I know that you're a man of faith. Um, can you tell me about how your faith really helps keep you grounded? Yeah, you know, I, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that, that really has, you know, been my number one priority, you know, uh, and so my relationship with, you know, with God, my relationship with my family, that comes first and foremost. Um, ironically, I am divorced, so, you know, it, uh, I, I see that that divorce also as a blessing, but, um, and, and then I've been, you know, I'm remarried to Casey, who you know, and that was another blessing. So, you know, there, there's so many different aspects of life, but I think being grounded in faith is important for everybody, you know, to find your faith. And the other thing that I do is, is I have a personal, uh, you know, life board of directors, so to speak, just different category experts who, who really are um, overachievers in their own field and, and, and have, have achieved or um, have achieved prominence in what they do. And so, for example, you know, in the media during, you know, all of our efforts to try to work with the media and tell the right story and create the right narrative that would demonstrate what we're trying to do that, you know, we're really keeping our neighbors and friends employed for commercial rent relief. Um, somebody who was key was Diane Ako from KITV, you know, she on the side would, would just help with that messaging and, you know, selfless volunteer trying to make the community better. And, and so I've found that that's so vital is to tap into these category experts, whatever the field may be and, you know, in each area, I have somebody who I can call for advice, uh, for sound advice, um, so that we can, again, do the right thing and, 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 and think through the different variables because every industry is different. And as you know, you know, like you said, there's so many different um, aspects of, of our portfolio. And so we're always looking at working with the right people. 
Ryan, it was a pleasure having you on today's show. I mean, you truly are the master of finance. I, I still don't know how you get everything done, but you find a way to do it. And I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Thank you, Coach Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Ryan and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.